Hey there, it's Shane Embry from Napalm Death, and you're watching Mammoth Metal TV. So, welcome back to New Zealand. Hey. It's uh, maybe the fourth time you've been here. Maybe the fourth time. Yeah. 96, and then we can't remember the other years. It gets, it gets confusing because we did the 96 trip. Yeah. And we didn't come down, I don't think, until probably 2007, maybe. Oh, uh, yeah. I think it was. The King's Arm, yeah. And, uh, I think that was with Diane Fetus, and then we came down again. Maybe uh, maybe again before we came to Carpet, I don't remember. Um, but I think here in Wellington it's the fourth time. Oh, yeah. Nice. And so the latest record, Resentment, is always seismic. That was recorded in the same sessions as Throws of Joy and the Joys of the It was, yeah. Napalm tend to be, we tend to just uh, always record more than we than you need. need. It's, it's, not, it's not even a case of, well, we, it's, it's never like, we, we never have like a filler mentality. Yeah. It's always like, everything is as good as it is, you know. Of course, you see, you, yeah, you, everyone has their favourites. Uh, so, I mean, I didn't, we started recording the album in like August of 2017. So the album didn't, the actual album didn't come out until sep September 2020. And of course the mini album a year 22. after. Yeah. So, or a year or so after. So, um, I guess in some ways it's worked out well from, from that perspective, you know. Yeah, well, two releases out of, out of this, well, it's a single session over three years, I guess. Yeah, it was just uh, it was it was interesting for me because Mitch really wasn't into Nate, but it, it, well, not that he wasn't into Nate, but I mean, he moved back over to the states for family reasons and life yeah. changes, whatever. And so it was kind of a, a strange thing where normally me and him would split the writing, but this time it was basically all on me, which I which sort of managed to do. It was interesting. It was an interesting way of working because we rehearsed some songs and then some of the other stuff I had riffs and Danny was like, well should we rehearse? I'm like, no, let's just go to the studio and just record the parts. Yeah, just piece it, it Piece it together. Yeah. Is that the first time you've done that? No, probably, yeah. I mean, I mean, in the early days, like I said, the second album, you know, like, you know, the nature of the stuff, you know, you, I mean, like tracks like Musclehead, which is like an extra track on the earlier Napalm sessions. It was a couple of riffs, Mickey was like, one, two, three, four, off he went, you know. Yeah. Um, and so I quite liked doing that this time because you know we have all these terms like have a discharge part or a slayer part or this part or a noise part and it's all like that you know yeah. different rhythms different sections so the way you can try to piece the tracks together Dan, I, I always find playing with Danny where we rehearse for a long time but then sometimes you would get nervous and, and, and the more takes you do the more nervous you get and then you lose it so I was kind of trying to trying to come at it from the angle of like, well, let's just do this, and he goes, well, what if I fuck up the drum roll? Um, I said, well, maybe it isn't a mess, maybe I can listen to the drum roll, maybe I'll change the rhythm a little bit to fit that. Nice. So you kind of keep it spontaneous. Yeah, when you're... Because, you know, because we... Nowadays, a lot of people do record with Pro Tools, you know, and everyone backlashes against Pro Tools, but the way we do it is like, yeah, okay, that's a recording device, but it's not like we, we, we like, we process it to death. You know, yeah, it's, it's, you so still use it like tape, like just yeah, press record you, you, and exactly. go. Yeah, you know, and then sometimes I go out of my way to make sure certain parts of it have that feel or noise of say 87. Yeah, cool. So that's just important for me. But uh, so I quite, I quite, and we set up some big oil, oil drums and percussion, made some kind of crazy noises, which of course is not a new thing, but it, I like it. It was, it was quite experimental, so it was all right. You know? Cool, man. And you got the book coming out next month. I have, yeah. It's kind of that's bizarre. You Life know. and Napalm Death. Yeah, that was. A, <laughs> I put a question mark in, but yeah, yeah, which it is makes quite, sense. Which is, which is, it makes sense to be fair because the, the fans know. I think um, I always used to joke about a book, and never ever taken it seriously, really. That's what I was going to ask. Like, when did the idea become serious? Was it like looking back and going, I could actually write a book about all this? Shit. Well, I think. I think everybody during the pandemic had their own personal dilemma or whatever. Um, I certainly did because I tried to try to present on it, honesty in there. It's like yeah, I, I like to laugh and joke, but there's different sides to me, and there's other friends have come into the book to write parts of their opinion. 
of, 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 um, of me, you know. Yeah. So, you know, it's not all like, hey, you know, glamour, what we call it, you know. But I think during the pandemic, it was like, I never never set out to, to make uh, music for money. Never did. And I, and I still like to do, I always like to do things primarily for creative purposes. But after so many years, having a family, and it's all I do, it's become a career. I, do, I don't like using that word neither, really, but but it, it's what it is. Yeah, you've got to have income somehow. And, and so during during the, um, the pandemic, uh, a, a manager friend wants to do you ever thought about doing a book? I'm like, well, sometimes, but I never kind of give it much thought. Um, but I'm sort of, I, I kind of kept myself lucky and blessed to be where I am. I thought, well, why not, really? You know, it's like you, you don't really get the chance, do you? You know, to. Not many people and, do. And then you kind of you're sitting there. I look, you know, like my dad had passed away, friends. And I come from a really small village, and like, you know, and you start to look back on your life, and you go, oh, wow. Well, I guess maybe some people would like to read about it. You know. Yeah, it's uh, got to be interesting. Um, and so far, I mean, I'm kind of I'm nervous and paranoid about it, to be fair. Um, a few people who read it have said, well, yeah, it's got some touches of humour, but it's balanced with some hopeful honesty and real life ego crushing. In fact, not crushing, but you, you take that apart, you know, because we, yeah. we all have these egos or whatever, yeah. you know. So it obviously presents me as hopefully someone who's out trying to be well, just like anybody else. We are, we're all the same. Um, and so, yeah, it's coming in October, and, I, and um, I guess hopefully I can do a couple of. Uh, some book festivals and things like that. And cool. It's given me the chance to do some interviews and talk about you know other things because obviously with Napalm and it's a it's a what do you call it? It's a humanitarian stance, which of course is important to the band. A lot of the time, um, the music, music music's not not in the shadow, but it gives me but this the, doing the book gives me a chance to talk about what I what I do putting the music together. Like that. Cool. And there's um, lots of stuff about the early days of the band, I guess. Yeah, there's lots of stuff about that. But like before you were in the band, but still you were like part of that. Yeah, circle. But yeah, because I mean, I, I sort of quit my job not even not even to join Napalm, just to hang out with Mickey Harris and Bruno. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. young eighteen, not like that, eighteen, kind of twenty years old, maybe. Like yeah, he seemed like a character. He was. He's a uh, very hyper, lots of energy. Still is now to this day. Um, and this term mad as a fish back in and that's certainly what he is in a good way so uh, so I got to know the Napalm guys before I joined them and I was sitting in the rehearsal rooms and they were you know the wines they had started to score and I had a chance to join them between A and B and I started to know I think I lost my, lost my nerve I think so uh, when you're reflecting on your on your memories you're like oh well I remember I seem to remember these times more than my brothers last week yeah if you ask me what happened last week I was like oh, what happened yeah yeah <coughs> so that's in there, and then you know, just the just general kind of journey through the late 80s, which you know, we were quite young and doing peel sessions and stuff that we, did, we didn't, we took it seriously, but we, did, so you, we were so young and just sort of naive, I suppose. We were like, wow, quite interesting to do something like the peel session and then go back home to your village where you come from. But the, but the crazy thing about be, being where I am now or where we are now is the fact that. You know, I joined Napalm Death when I was 19, and now I'm 54 months in. You never, you never quite imagined that you were going to be around doing this. And still trying to push push yourself as far as you can musically. I mean, live, it's... Uh, I still like to think it's a pretty intense experience live, you know, but... But some people ask, you know, if you would re-record album, I just don't see the point in that, because you, you can never recapture. Well, it's like rewriting a diary, isn't it? You're not going to... It's just it's a time and a place. No, it is, it, you're capturing something. I mean, I, I, it's fair enough for the other bands to do it, but it's not working. But can you think of one that was ever better? Like, if someone we record something that you love, it's never... I, all the ones I've heard I don't like. No, I mean, I, 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 I have that. I've yeah, 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 well, one. yeah, I, I haven't checked out the Cavalier re-recordings of the... They've just done the, Actually, that's not bad. Yeah, I do know that. That's pretty good. <laughs> I, mean, I, I think I had one track and I thought I liked the sound of it, but I think they really focused in on trying to keep the, that old necro sound or whatever. Definitely, there's still a shit ton of reverb on the vocals, yeah. like, it's well, there, the, but the production is better. Well, that's the thing, I mean, it's, uh, you, you, it's like a bit of an attitude to it, but it's, 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 it's difficult, I think. I mean, I mean, uh, 
I don't know. It's not that I wouldn't want to. Would, wouldn't attempt it. I'd be like, well, is there a need? Is there a need to? Yeah, yeah. you'd rather do something new, you know. Well, I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I, mean I, I like to think. I mean, the last album, yeah, the last album is not scum, but it, it has extreme. It's an extreme in its own way, you know. So I'd rather do that. Really. Yeah, and they're all been extreme. I think there's those three in the '90s that people talk about. I that I love because that's the era that I got into. Die tried yeah. and so I got torn apart. And word from the exit went. At the time, people were like mixed about it. Yeah. And of course, then you go forward 20 years, and people go, oh, it's these revered albums. So yeah. It, I just what I, what was it good on the last record was I could sit there and go, well, you know what? And just look at all these albums that we've, we've been lucky enough to make. I'm going to track like that for a while. Let's have, let's have something like that. That's cool. Let's have something like this. Yeah. And, and you and don't so, want all the same stuff over 30 no, years no. anyway. You've got to change. So and then we, and the end result is you have like a, I don't know, like uh, the, uh, what's the one track? Narcissus, I think it is. I mean, to me, that's that's just like a old kind of punky hardcore track. And then you've got a title track, which is more industrial. And then you've got some tracks with blatant kind of like death metal, I suppose. And so that's a nice mixture. Yeah. And then Barney ties it all together with his vocal stuff. And the mini one's got a couple of uh, guest vocalists on it. Yeah, we had and, Don. Uh, yeah, well, on code we had. I think Jeff came in for something, and, and Jamie from Hate Breed. And I think we had Jello. Yeah, is there anyone that you'd um, want to work with in the future? Or that uh, you've thought about that you'd... I keep, I, I, keep, I, keep, I keep on hassling my pattern all the time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because we're friends and, and whatnot, and whatever. And um, he always kind of politely turns me down. Oh, it's, yeah. uh, I just like the idea of, of him doing, not necessarily a singing voice, because I know he can do some pretty crazy voice. Yeah. Yeah. I think it'd be quite interesting to, to get into this something. And, there's a couple, I guess. And, I mean, I've always, I mean, it's, 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 it's quite an unca- uncharacteristic thing. I love the band from the 90s called the Cocktail Twins and they're, they're very kind of dreamy, you know. Oh, yeah. The vocalist, she had this kind of, she never, she didn't really sing many English words, she would kind of make her own language up. It's quite ethereal. I thought I've always wanted to just do some real slow noise but with this ethereal voice over the top and, I don't know, I think maybe she wouldn't do it, but... <laughs> Worth a try, man. But, 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 but um, things like that, I think, yeah, I, I would look to, look to try it. And, uh, Next year we're probably going to start um, working on the, the next one finally, you know. Sweet. So. And how long does that take when you start working on it out? I guess it's different every time, but do you have like a rough date for where you want to No, it's going to be tr- it, 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 No, the, 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 last, the last record was the, we started it musically in two stages and then Barney took a few, quite a few days to record his vocals because we were touring, so I think this one, this one I think we do a tour in February maybe. I think that might be happening, and then after that, I think Brian wants to take some time off, which will give me the time right, to yeah. sort of put that. I've got lots of ideas, but just piece it together, you know? Cool. And hopefully go to the studio and just kind of experiment and make a racket like we normally do. Nice. Yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to the racket tonight. Cool. Like, uh, good luck with the book release. Thank you, sir. Is yeah. there a date for that, or...? I think middle of October, or, you know, the, October, yeah, so. I think they're doing like a bunch of pre-orders. It's a strange. I'm used to our albums the way they were, but they did this, you know, they build it up for pre orders in the late middle of October. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sweet. So there's a link below to order your book. And uh, yeah, thanks for your time, man. Much appreciated. No problem, man. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you.